This is a um, video about Visio 2010 Campus Network Diagrams, Physical Diagram. This is part five, adding equipment schedules and reviewing a uh, critical part of the process and something that makes all the uh, difficulties before this part uh, worthwhile. Uh, looking at the drawing up to this point, um, there's a few things that we want to finish off before doing the schedules. Um, first thing there would be um, we want to look at the fiber optic cables. We'll start out with the first building and uh, the numbering of those cables. And we're going to uh, view the shape data and um, I'll select one of the fiber optic cables and you can see we don't have a cable ID here. So uh, we're going under the uh, premise that um, we're not showing the routing of all the cables, just where they start and begin. Uh, I'm going to assume that this cable is the uh, coming from some central place on the campus. I'm going to just give that the uh, first number. Now the other end of that cable isn't shown in this drawing. We should have another building and we show all these cables coming up into it. Um, this one I'm going to call just uh, 10002. Uh, this cable over here is going to be the other end of that one. It goes from the closet up to this one. So it has the same number. And uh, we'll proceed and do that same type of thing over here. Uh, all of these, of course, are uh, campus wide numbers, so we don't want to have any duplicates. This is number three, and uh, again, we're not showing the other end of that when it comes from some central place on campus. Uh, this would be and this would be the other end of that same cable, so one zero 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 four. And then what would be this one would be five. So I'm that same number. So that was uh, one part we wanted to deal with. And the other thing is uh, some of the equipment, we haven't uh, put any IP addresses in. I'm just going to put in a couple here. This is just because uh, we're going to do some ports. Uh, I'd like to see some of that. Okay, now um, of course uh, you would fill in all that data normally in doing the drawing. We just wanted to do some for the purpose of reports. We're going to add another sheet. Um, I'm going to rename this sheet, and uh, it'll be schedules. And um, we will. Uh, go to the review uh, section on the ribbon and shape reports and what we're going to do here is um, create some reports on the shapes that are in here. Now uh, we want to choose to report on the shapes on all the pages. This will be an important part because we we'll could have like dozens of buildings on here and we want to summarize that whole thing. And to restrict the report we're going to go to advanced and here you can um, get the report scheduled for anything um, that you want. We're going to focus on a layer and we're going to look at switches. And so we set that condition and then click add. This is now becomes a uh, criteria for the report. Then we're going to choose the fields we want to display. We don't want to put too much in here. We don't have too many fields. Uh, one thing with these drawings is you want to limit the number of fields that you have. Uh, we're going to put the IP address, a location, and we didn't even put product descriptions in for the switches, so we're going to choose product numbers. 
Uh, now we're going to name the report. This is going to show up on the schedule that goes into the drawing. So we're going to call this um, network switches all built. And uh, we're going to set some characteristics here. And uh, first thing is going to be subtotals. Uh, we're going to group these by the product number. There's other ways you could do this. And for each product number, uh, we're going to want a count. And then within that product number, we're going to sort these switches by uh, location. I'm going to move that column order up on the location. And I'm going to sort them by location. Uh, next, I'm going to name the report. It's going to call this uh, network switches. And we'll just save it in the drawing. And finish. And that just shows our drawing here. And we're going to choose to run it. When we run the report, we have a choice of report formats. And the one that I find most convenient to use is the um, uh, Visio shape, puts a shape right into the report here, but uh, also the Excel form of having to do a separate spreadsheet can be useful. Uh, I want to say the report, the copy of the report definition. And okay, we just generated our first schedule. Now there's a few things we want to look at in the schedule. One thing is, uh, as we zoom in on this, that uh, you can see we only have a few IP addresses, addresses and those are the ones that we uh, inserted. It has uh, grouped this by the type of switch. And um, also, uh, we can see that uh, it, it gives us a complete list of the switches. And we can see that it has. Um, them sorted out by location, so they're in order of location. Now, one thing that would make this report look a little better would be if we didn't copy all these uh, product numbers like this. And um, also, we're going to check this, and uh, we can select the report and uh, right click, and we can. Um, actually update the report, which means we can change the report. Okay. I'm going to modify. We go to subtotals, options, don't repeat identical values. Okay. Now we're going to run it. And you can see that didn't repeat those numbers. So it looks a little better. The other thing is is that this is actually can be edited as, as an Excel spreadsheet. So if we double click on this, uh, it puts us into Excel. And let's say, for instance, that we want to uh, take this column and uh, center the text. We can do that. Now, one thing I would caution about there, though, is that uh, any changes you make in that spreadsheet won't be duplicated when you update the report. So I keep that to a minimum. Let's say, for instance, that we go and, and do another. We did um, uh, in uh, the administration building here. We got a couple of IP addresses. Let's say that we went into Old Main Hall and uh, put an IP address in in here. Back to the schedules, right click, and we're just going to run the report. And you can see that now we've got another IP address shown here in the report. So this is a great way to review. Make sure you've got all the addresses in. Uh, it sorts everything out uh, very clearly and uh, shows you that you've got your drawing complete. Also, it's very easy to update. So when you make any changes, very easy to update this report. Uh, we're going to um, 
do another report. Uh, this time we're going to look at um, uh, fiber optic cables. So here our layer name is going to be fiber optic cables. Add that. And go to. In this case, we're going to show the cable ID. We don't have an IP address, the location. <clears throat> and we didn't use product numbers, we used product descriptions on those. So I'm going to select those fields. Uh, fiber optic cables. All buildings. <clears throat> And here we're going to group by cable ID. And we should only have two listings for each cable ID. But it's kind of important that we uh, do get to see that. We're going to show the count for the cable ID. And then we will uh, move this up. And we'll sort. Um, by location. I'm going to call this report. And we're going to run this report. Send the report with a copy of the report definition. And now here we have a list of fiber optic cables. Now, uh, what's important here is, is when we look through this report, uh, in this case we only used one product description, so we didn't we didn't uh, have anything else that shows up there. But for each cable ID, we should have two entries, so it shows us the two ends of where it goes. But for cable 10004, it shows that we're starting in which closet we're in to start, where we finish. So uh, every cable, uh, when the drawing is complete, would have two entries for it. And uh, if you don't have two entries, then something's incorrect. And if you number the cables sequentially, uh, there, should all, there should be no missing numbers. So this uh, provides an excellent um, review of your drawing. So uh, from this way uh, point on, it's easy to uh, put any different number of schedules in the drawing, and all of them are very easily updated. So when the drawing is kept up to date, um, everything can be checked. Uh, important feature here is minimize the amount of data so that there's not a huge amount uh, involved in doing the updates. And um, that should pretty much um, wrap it up.